Right, we're at the Carrington auction now, and uh, and at car boots out. So I'm looking for old bits for to restore and all that. But we just come across this. This is a little pooch maxi moped from 1974. Let's have a little look at it. Right, as you can see, 1974. Totally original, eh? Hey? No, 74, I said, didn't I? 1974, baby. Totally original. It does turn over. I've had a little kick of it, but uh, it's quite high up the numbers. Number 418, but uh, it's only just started the auction now, so I don't know how quickly the auction chap's going to go. There's a couple of other little things here, but. I'm not really interested in them. That's what we're at, this uh, auction there as you can see. Mostly farm equipment. And now we're gonna have and now we're gonna have something to eat, baby, aren't we? This weather is fantastic, baby, isn't it? Yeah. We're nearly at home now, aren't we? Well I'm trying to get there, but you keep stopping. Yeah, we didn't stop for that moped, did we? No. Why? Because I've got a life and I've got things to do. <laughs> you got a life, baby. This is our life. Look, who can wish Yeah, I know, but I just want to get home. Who can wish for better than this, baby? So as I say, we didn't get that moped. We left it about. It was going really slow that auction. It was about 150 to 200. No, it wasn't even that, was it? That 134, wasn't it? Mm. And we'd been there for over an hour. So it's going to take at least another two to three hours to get up to that. So we left it. Anyway, You're we did find. You're boring me. Hey. You're boring me. We did find this baby, didn't we? What I happened? like this. We did find this. I do like this. Look at this. Look. Now this, he wanted 25 pounds for it, which is quite a lot of money, but. Uh, Oh, it's lovely. I knocked him. I offered him fifteen. He wouldn't take it. It's quite heavy. Puff, puff. It's 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 well broken, as you could say. It's got something inside there. I don't know what that is. Perhaps it puffs steam. I don't know what it is. It might puff steam. It's got puff, puff on it. No, I don't know. We'll have a look nearer at the time when we come to strip it down and refurbish yeah, it. Yeah, look underneath. Look. Yes. There's something in there. I don't quite know. There's something in there, baby. This has got puff, puff. I think it puff, puff steam, yeah. steam. Puff, it's puff, a bit puff. battered and dented. Oh, it's broken there, isn't it, in there? Yeah, well, I... Shout, are you watching yeah, on there, baby? I've, I've got it on there. I've not got your, your face that, on that there. That is plastic, but that's screwed on. So I've got to look what Ned's doing. There is something inside it. I don't know. Can you see that, Shell? You're dropping it on the floor. What? what? It was in there, that bit, under your foot. No, that's a bit of paper. That's a bit of string, darling. Hmm. But there is something inside it. I don't know whether it's a... Uh... I don't know. I can't... Can you see, look? Can you see in there? Yeah. I don't quite know exactly what that is or whether that's part of it. It's tied up. There's an arm underneath here which is tied up. But anyway, if I can't get it running or this bit's missing to it, this is going to be powder coated. <laughs> if we can't get the internals running because they're not all there or they're broken or whatever, then it'll make a nice exhibition piece, I thought. Ornament? Yes. <laughs> exhibition. But as you can see, we've got to get that big dent out there. I don't know how far it comes apart. Can you see that? That should be curved like that and it's flattened off there. Look, you see that? Mm. That bit I'll have to remake. But to say this is made out of plastic and obviously it's very dented and misshapen at the front as well so we'll see how it goes it's called a puff puff by the looks of it maybe and who's it made by it's made in england it's trying it's a trying which are well known for tin toys but it's really quite heavy so it's not one of those very thin tin plate things so uh, i'll have a look do a bit of an investigation before i do the restoration okay baby let's go back home and get a nice cold drink and we'll take it from there on what we do today. See you later. Bye for now. It's no good. I couldn't resist. We come home from the auction, as you know, and we ended up going back there. I counted the hours down to the uh, time when I thought them motorbikes were going to come up. The pooch we missed. I did bid on it, but it went too high. And I ended up with this. Give us a hand, baby. It's an old mobile unregistered. And there's this little side bike here. Let me get it out. Oh, side bike. Now this I had no intention of buying, but it was giveaway money, literally, for the price of a takeaway meal. I thought, I'll take a chance on it. It's totally knackered, but uh, might be able to have a little bit of fun with it. Let's show you. As you can see, it's one of those mini bike things. I know it's not um, it's not very old at all. It's got no age. It's a Chinese copy bike. The forks are knackered on it. 
it's uh, it's all there, but I mean it's all taken apartable, if that is a word. And uh, might be able to have a bit of fun, do some powder coating with it, have some practice powder coating or whatever, and maybe even get it running. I'm not sure. So that's that. That's it, baby. You you, you ride it over there. <laughs> now this thing. 1972 I think this is and there's no paperwork with it but the bloke who was selling this there was one of these in a the little rally moped that went for quite a lot of money uh, this one was reasonable pretty reasonable in cost but um, the, the chap who had it had had them for years and years and they were just sitting there he was just sitting there with them sort of thing before while it's being auctioned off open that back door baby what? open the back door oh. Oh. can you push no hold on Hold on, hold on baby. Let me just get the front. Just push that wheel a little bit. Get out, water. That's it. Here we go, now we're cooking on gas. Yeah? Let's get it right out. Right, let's get it out then. There we go. Put it on the centre stand. Don't have one. And that's it. That is, again, another what they call pedal and plop moped. It turned over. There you go. But uh, obviously, I don't know if it runs or not. But by the looks of it, the last time it was on the road, or registered anyway for tax, was 1987. It's got a bit of rust on it, so I mean, it's going to need a bit of work on it, obviously, but uh, it's all there. That's the reason why I purchased it and uh, believe it or not one of these was the first bike not the first bike the it was the bike I had when I got first done for no insurance um, back in the early 80s uh, I drove it to work thinking it was like a push bike hint, like a push bike sort of thing and uh, yeah, I got done for no insurance on it. <laughs> One of these little things. And that stayed on my license for a good few years. Uh, yeah, again, a bit of corrosion on it. But uh, the rims look like they might come up. But again, I mean, this is gonna be totally stripped down as well. And uh, refurbished along with the other one. And it's basically got what looks like a bicycle chain on it. It's so thin, that chain. But uh, yeah, it's all there, and that's the little Moby Let Moby Matic, I think it's called. My one I had was red. This looks like normal, original paint on this, but uh, yeah, I don't know. That must have been a bloody, must have had a visor on it. I would imagine at one stage, maybe going up there. I don't know. I'll be taking that off. I don't want that on there. It's just a, a bracket. But as you can see, it's got that little lever at the bottom there, which is like a decompression lever. I think you'll find. What is it? I was under the impression this was a two-stroke. Let's have a look. I'm sure this is a two-stroke. Yeah, I'm sure, pretty sure this is a two-stroke. My one was a two-stroke, what I had. But I'll have to check on that to say uh, what the situation is with that. Again, no key in it. That must be a... Is that a steering lock? I don't know. I'm not sure. Anyway, so that's it. That's the Moby Matic which I picked up for a little money, to be honest with you, at auction. So let's get it round the back anyway. Cool, there's no sponge in that seat whatsoever, it's rock solid. Let's get it round the back and have a closer look at it. Right, so here we go, we've got it in the log cabin now. So I suppose the first thing I want to do is to see if we can get this running. And uh, I can't quite gain access to the engine, so I'm going to take off these leg panniers here. I think there's only a few bolts that hold them on, so uh, let's start doing that. So I think we need to take off these side screws here. A lot of this is tin work. On modern mopeds, the panniers tend to be um, made out of plastic. So that's top one's loosened off there. I'm not too sure what's happening there. If I can turn the steering wheel that way. Yeah, we've got another one here, look. Everything seems to be well oiled. So lucky enough, we're not dealing with rusty fixings. So maybe, is there one more down there somewhere? Oh, that one does have to come off. It's, there's a bracket that runs across the front of the engine and that's uh, tied into that, so. It looks like there's only three bolts that hold these leg panniers on. 
There we go. That's that one. Just put that to one side for the minute. I do need to get containers and all that. So let's go around the other side, do the other one. And yet again, there'll be three more on this side. My mobile that I, that I had years ago didn't have one of these. I don't think it had the leg shields on it. I'm not sure. I can't remember. It was a long time ago now. Right, so that's that off. And the engine, being a two-stroke, very, very oily. And that is a decompression valve. I remember now, you, you, it's not working though, but what you do, you pedal along and when you're going up, you, you have your finger on this and you pedal along and then you let go and then that gives it full compression and then it should run. So it looks like that's stuck. And I'm gonna do what I keep forgetting to do when I'm working on oily, greasy engines, is put on me, me gloves, these nitrile gloves. Because I do keep forgetting and it's not nice to have all these oils on your skin and not only that the detergents you have to wash them off with as well so keep that to a minimum otherwise that can draw all the oils out of your hands naturally so anyway let's have a look what we got here so i want to see if we've got spark first of all um i don't know these haven't got an ignition system as such where you need a key you just literally pedal and plop that little lever in and off you go so everything's covered in oil but i suppose that is a good thing to stop things from being rusted but as I say, it just means you've got to wear your gloves, which isn't a problem. Right, okay, so that's that. A bit cleaner. Now, I could take that spark plug out. Right, let's get the spark plug spanner in there if we can. Try and nip that out. Yep, that's nice. Nice to see it's not seized in at all. Otherwise, that gives us a whole different set of problems. Like trying to tap threads in heads and stuff like that. Right, let's have a look what we got here. Well, it looks pretty much okay. It's a bit rich, but uh, that's not a problem. Just give it a wipe over. Again, the spark plug might be faulty as well. So, again, this is just preliminary checks. We've got a gap there, so that's okay. It's an NGK plug, so I'm happy with that. Nice NGK cap on there as well. Normally, when you get bikes, especially back in the uh, 70s and the 80s, they had some sort of metal type one and everyone used to take them off and put these Bakelite NGKs on because they were run out for being a lot better, I think. Right, now I'm going to try and find the clean piece of engine here or frame or whatever. And hopefully we can uh, see if we've got a spark. Well, I believe this has got contact breaker points on this and I've got to find out where they are. They're not under this one, this is the variator. I think so maybe they're on the other side maybe there's a housing on the other side let's go around the other side and have a look right I just decided to turn the bike around now I've got my finger over the spark plug hole there and cool that's got really good compression so I think I'm happy with that for compression wise so now as I say I've just got to find where the points are I think they are under this side because I can see wires here. I think I have to take this off. And there seems to be a square headed shaft on there. So bear with me while I just get this off. Right, well I've just found this little uh, 3 8 drive drill attachment. And it, that goes in there. So I'm just going to try. I don't know whether this is going to work or not. And undo this. I'm not too sure whether this will be a left hand or a right hand thread. I'm going to go in the normal direction first of all to undo it. So let's just try and turn the engine first. Yeah, see I've got to hold that somehow. It needs to be an impact driver really. I haven't got an impact driver but uh, at least I can now get a, the engine turning over at a decent speed. Let's... No, there's definitely no spark there. So I've got to find a way now of holding this engine. I think someone's had a go on the casing before there, look. And tapped that. And uh, I need to hold that still somehow to get that undone. Ideally, if I had a big strap on it, I could do it that way, but uh, I don't think I've got one. Let me have a look. Right, well, I've just found out this is a left-handed thread, so I haven't got one of those straps that go around there. So I'm going to try and improvise something with this 
cord I've got here. Right, I've got that nice and tight on there now. Now, again, I don't really like doing this this way, but uh, it seems to be the only way I can do it at this moment in time. I'm going to try and give it a few clouts. Now we know it's an anti-clockwise thread. Oh, there we go. Got it. There we go. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Oh, that's it. Yep, look at that. This worked. How about that? Always a way to get over a problem, isn't there? With what you've got. Now, some people say, oh, you should have had a thingy. To yeah, I know that. We haven't got that here. We've just got to make do with what we've got. This is an old start, cold start, will it run video. And uh, I'm sure that will dress up anyway. There we go. Ah, there we go. Yeah, look, there's the uh, the rotating magnets. I can see the points now. And that's where we need to have a spark. So when you pedal a bit fast, they should be opening and closing. Which they are doing. Yep, they're opening and closing fine. So I'm just going to get a bit of sandpaper. Just give them a bit of a clean up. And then we'll try pedaling. And then uh, see if we can get it started. But again, we know we've got compression. We've got access to the spark now. We should be able to get a spark here, hopefully. If I turn the engine over fast enough on the drill, which I have done, but we didn't have a spark. So I'm going to clean these up first and then uh, we'll take it from there. Yeah, that's a bit better now. Right, so I think we've got cleaner points now. So the points are opening and shutting, so I'm happy with that. Right, let's put that back on. There we go, that's in there. Right, so we know that that's a anti-clockwise thread. I'm not going to go mad and do that. I'm just going to nip it up. Just like that. Because I want to spin it round. Let's see whether or not we've got a spark now. So I'll just whack that in my battery drill. And I'm going to go clockwise. Yes, there is a very faint spark. I saw a spark there though, but that could be the plug, as I say, so uh, it might be a plug. Right, now I'm going to clean this up a little bit as well, this spark plug. Where's that blinking emery paper gone? And that's the thing with these um, little mopeds of this era. I'm sure they were 6 volt. Very poor sparks. Or if you have a problem with... Uh, connections you can uh, really suffer yeah there's a lot of rubbish on there in between the electrodes because I remember my two strokes of the era again um, fouling up sometimes very good spot but it is one there no it's not one there see we, before we go any further with the fuel we've got to make sure we've got a spark so I know I've got compression let me clean them points one more time and then we'll take it from there I'll be back in a minute right I've just noticed that this or what I thought was just a bit of string hanging down here appears to be an earth, a braided cable, and I don't know where it's come from, but obviously I would imagine it's, it should go down to earth or something, but it looks like it may or may not go to the coil, I'm not too sure, so I'm going to unbolt the coil, pull it forward, because all these are so oily under here, I can't, I can't actually see what I'm doing, just wash this off a little bit here, as I say, it's all totally grimed up, as you can probably see, but uh, if I can sort of make a bit of headway with just removing these cables here first of all, look. Down there. And as you can see, there's an earth. It is an earth strap. And it appears to be bolted onto the side of our coil. So maybe that's why we're getting nothing. Because the thing may or may not be earthed. I'm not too sure. Let me just clean this up and I'll... Uh, come back to you once I've done that maybe unbolt with the coil right okay so I've got the coil off now as you can probably see that went on that way 
Now that earth cable was connected to this, these posts here. Now I'm presuming that this is how the coil gets its negative from. But when you bolt that through the frame, the frame is actually a painted surface, so it's not picking up its earth through the frame. It looks to me like it relies on this cable which was on there and then bolted down to the chassis somewhere to pick up its uh, return. I don't know, I've never worked on these before but common sense tells me that's the case. The back of the coil there, there's this single cable feed in it and as you know the coil inside needs a positive and a negative charge so that's the positive which was on there and it seems to be okay, there don't seem to be any corrosion so I think we had a problem with our earth bearing in mind that I'd found that floating about. So I've cleaned all the terminals up now and I just want to try and prove a point that we've got the pulse coming down this line which puts the pulse to the coil via the points opening and shutting. And the way I'm going to do that is to get a meter, put it on AC volts. Where are we? AC 20 volts should be all right. And I'm going to earth that out turn it on first obviously spin the engine over and see if we've got a flickering voltage here you know I'll be careful I could do a clips here but anyway let's let's do what we can so let's turn the engine over two volts so we've got two volts there this I think is a six volt system. So maybe we're not generating enough speed, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, we've only got two volts there. But I do know we've got a voltage there, so there is something coming out of this setup. I have cleaned the points as we know. I now know that I've cleaned this. So what I'm gonna do now is just to connect this back up Right, so that goes like that. Then we've got our earth, which picks up our earth via this cable. See, we're learning on the job on this one because I haven't got a manual. It's basic common sense, and that's one thing that you can use with these old vehicles, as opposed to modern technology, which is all uh, computerized, and you can't sort of take it apart like we're doing here with a basic socket set or spanners or whatever or screw cut the screwdrivers this is what we used to do back in the 70s and the 80s and probably even well definitely earlier was tinker used to enjoy tinkering about sort of thing you know so these are two volts or two and a half volts to me represents a weak spark right so i've bolted that back in place now i've cleaned up that earth and i'm just going to crimp on a temporary lug onto here Ooh with my crimping tool. There we go. And that's long enough to go to there. I just want to make sure I've got an earth, you see. I've got it onto audible buzzer at the moment. So if I hold on to uh, this K, oh sorry, this point here, down to say something, Yep, so that's definitely picking up an earth through the frame. So I know that that's going to be a good enough earth for me to earth up the coil with. So I'm just going to get one of these leg pannier mounting brackets. You see, I've taken my gloves off again. Look, and all my hands are dirty again. <laughs> what I said I didn't want to do, but there you go. Right, so I know I've got an earth through that. So if I put that onto there, screw that into there. I then know that I've got a decent earth to the coil. Thing that's concerning me, hey, oh, that's nice on there now. Look, thing that's concerning me is that I've only got two point something volts coming into the coil. Well, I personally think it should be about six volts, but uh, let's just see if that's done anything. See, no spark again. I have tried a different spark plug in there. Just to make sure it weren't a spark plug for those of you who are saying, put another spark plug in. No. 
So I'm going to have to get back inside here again because I don't think two volts is enough to trigger that coil. That's my thinking anyway. So I'm going to have a look back in here, clean them points up again. I've done it twice now, but uh, I may see something else when I'm in there. So I'll see you in a minute. Right, okay then. So I've put the flywheel back on now. I've tried a different plug lead in there. I think there was a, uh, may have been an issue with this original one. Not too sure, I'm not gonna carry on now. I'm gonna do this in another video because I think what I'm gonna do is to take the engine out. It only takes about two minutes to take the engine out. And I also wanna check the uh, the timing as well. And for that, I'm gonna need a dial gauge to get into the top of the engine. I haven't got one of them, so I can't really check that anyway. But we don't appear to be getting spark. It could be the coil. I'm gonna to have to check the resistance on the uh, ohms. I've got to do a bit of research to find out what the resistance is. We did have a weak spark there, but now we haven't got any spark whatsoever. And as I say, I've cleaned everything up, but uh, these things happen with old vehicles when they've been standing for ages. So I actually took the little cam that comes off there for the uh, ignition timing. And I need a, as I said, I need a dial gauge to actually retime that cam lobe up to find out when the points open. So that's what I've got to do there. I think it's going to run. It's got marvellous compression. It's only going to be ignition and fuel that's going to stop this from running. And I'm sure we can sort it out. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this little video. And we'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye for now.